Let us start our lesson with uh, animation using the lamp. Uh, first example would be uh, forward kinematics, then we'll switch to inverse kinematics once that's set up. All right, so I'll just kind of recap uh, our object right here. Um, the first one is the main base. Um, if you uh, have not followed the series, uh, the second video for this is uh, parenting and um, putting all this in uh, position and naming um, naming them and also parenting them, all right? So the base one right here, so if I press G uh, to, uh, let me turn on my screencast real quick. Press G here for grab or move, it's the main parent. So we're not here to learn yet with um, having uh, controllers and all that, uh, stuff that you would need to uh, do a, a successful rigging. This is just to kind of cover the basics of uh, setting up uh, your forward kinematics animation or animation in general. That would require positioning of pivot points. And basically it's, uh, it's the beginning of uh, character animation or any type of animation. All right, so press G again. That's the main one. And I'm gonna right click to cancel that movement, okay? And then if I select the next um, the next um, object in the hierarchy right here, would be the base neck is what we decided to call it. So if I press G on this one, again, it will move, okay? And then anything above it follows it. So this is the main parent and everything else is the hierarchy of uh, the children of that parent, okay? This one right here, would be spine one's what we call it, spine two. And then after that, the cone. And then this one, of course, the bulb or the lamp right there itself, it's just parented to that. So it just kind of follows, all right? We want it separate so we can easily uh, make changes to it if we want to, like we can change the color. All right, and then we don't have to kind of select it and uh, isolate it from the selection, so. All right, so let's go back to our main base right here. So. Um, when animating this, we're going to try and simplify everything. So we're going to be bringing our uh, transform uh, panel on the sidebar right here. And we can input uh, values right here so that you can, you know, be precise with your animation. Uh, another thing is that uh, everything is uh, zeroed out here uh, with Delta Transform. Again, the previous video covers all that, okay? So if you're seeing a bunch of numbers right here, you might want to watch that video so that you'll be seeing it exactly as how we're doing it right here. Okay, so a uh, coordinate system is something we haven't talked about yet, but I'm going to go over here and then kind of bring uh, down the... Uh, the uh, the menu for our coordinate system. Right now we're using global. Global simply means if I go to my X, Y, Z, all right, uh, in Blender speak at least, which is uh, X going left to right, green or Y going in and out, Z going up and down. Uh, regardless what the orientation of this one, uh, of our object, uh, we're following the global, right? So. If I were to rotate this this way, all right, you see where um, if I wanted them to rotate this one kind of going um, forward, uh, I can't, all right, because if I have the X, look, it's already skewed. Because no matter what, our orientation is based on the global XYZ, okay? So, um, we're going to move uh, to local right here. So if I go local, okay, local to the object's orientation, right? So if I were to, let's say, rotate the base this way, and I still want to rotate this, you can already tell here that it's doing what we're supposed to do. You see it right here. And again, this is just to simplify things. There's, you know, there's correct way to rig and uh, you know, without changing that to uh, to local, you'll be able to do everything you need. But this one to just kind of simplify it, okay? So if I select, say, let's this this one right here, since it's in local, look what's uh, look at the orientation. It follows the original orientation of the object. So now I can rotate this along the x, and it's not skewing. All right, angle like so. And this one right here going this way, so on and so forth. Okay, so that's basically local right there. So I'm going to go 
undo that so that we're back to the way it was. Okay, uh, one more. There we go. So we're back to global, okay? Uh, we're gonna switch it to local now, all right? And let's take a look at our objects. So this object, the base one right here, uh, and looking at all this, you see there's a lock icon right here, which is open, all right? So all the things that since we're animating now, we want to make sure we don't accidentally animate um, things that we don't mean to animate, like for this object right here, okay, the base one. What is allowed here for animation? Because before you do a reanimation, you got to have a plan, you got to have a motive. Uh, there's a reason why you're animating, right? But this one is just kind of learning animation, so we don't have to have like a backstory for this lamp for now in order to uh, kind of explain what's happening. But at least let's set it up, okay? So this is again forward kinematics where everything we're doing is based on just chain link object, okay? Very similar to how you would animate a puppet in a stop motion animation, all right? So you would uh, rotate one limb at a time. The inverse kinematics is opposite of that where instead of animating one object at a time, you would grab the the uh, your IK handle, and then if let's say if I grab this, it's not set up for IK yet, but if I grab this, let's say, and then move it like so, this uh, spine one and two would follow along, and you'll have kind of like a realistic movement of your, let's say, your limbs or your arms, okay? So again, forward kinematics, going back to this one, we're not going to scale this for sure. We're not going to make this any bigger. All right. So we will lock our scaling. Okay. All right. So what is allowed regarding rotating this? Okay. Uh, we're probably not going to rotate it going this way. We want this floor, I mean, this base to just pretty much stay on the ground or on the table or whatever floor you're going to put, but we want it to be able to rotate this way. All right. So we're going to lock everything and we're not going to tip it like that. So we're going to lock everything except for rotation Z. So I'm going to go here and lock X and Y and only Z is allowed. So when you do this, now that there are locks, see, um, you can't rotate it on those things that are only what's allowed. All right. So again, this is kind of like the basic soap rigging. We're now trying to eliminate all the possible issues that the animator might face all right so um let's go uh here what about location so location for sure we're we'll you know we'll allow it to to do everything all right it can go up and down and all that i would be allowed in case you want to jump it or uh, make it jump and whatnot okay so scale everything is locked only z is allowed location is allowed okay all right, so now we're going to go to the base. I'm going to go switch it to this one, make it a little bit easier. All right, so this is the base. All right, uh, let me put it back. All right, so base neck. So this one for sure, we can allow uh, rotation going this way, right? Makes sense. Uh, definitely no scaling. All right, it's allowed to uh, rotate along the Z axis only. Okay, because we don't want to be, let me unlock those. We don't want to be doing that. All right, so only Z is allowed. Can you move it? No, no movement on this one. So only rotation this way. Excellent. All right, next, no scaling for sure. All right, it's not an exaggerated uh, kind of cartoony animation. It's just one-to-one uh, -one with the object, okay? So we're not stretching it like a, a Roadrunner, all right, or Acme product. Okay, so this one, uh, no location, right? We're not moving this. All right, it's not moving at all. And uh, rotation-wise, only X is allowed. Can't do this. So only X is allowed. And that's it. We're limited to X movement only. Next, this part. No movement. No rotation for sure. I mean, no scaling. And only X is allowed. So we lock those. And finally, this one right here. Um, we're just going to, uh, well, should we allow it to uh, pivot 
left and right to kind of look well we could probably just let's simplify it only that one can make uh, the whole thing kind of uh, we'll let uh, we'll control the freedom here because we have set up this one where this one is just one piece so all right so I'll, this one will just be allowed to go also X so we'll simplify it no movement at all all right and then the light bulb nothing Okay, so you can't accidentally animate that. We're just animating this and it'll follow along. All right, so now that we have set up all the limitation for this uh, for this uh, lamp, we can now start animating, okay? And it'll be obvious right here, if you have the sidebar open, what's allowed, you see it? Don't play with any of the numbers that would do, uh, you know. All right, so uh, let's kind of just recap basics of animation in Blender. If I were good to go to my move tool right here, okay, if I wanted to, um, we do have a video uh, on the channel that explains the, uh, the four steps in animation where you select the object, you position the time, you transform the object, and part four would be to keyframe it that just goes over and over. So check that out in the channel if you haven't done so. Um, let's uh, kind of do an animation, right? So select the object you want to animate so I got the base selected okay position the time all right uh, I'm going to uh, simplify this one probably go to 100 frames only so that we get to see just 100 frames down here all right and I'm in the uh, layout viewport not in the uh, animate because we're just kind of practicing animation right so all right so if I were to uh, uh, I position the time. Next, I transform the object. So let's say this is the beginning. Uh, I just want to move it right here. And then fourth step is to keyframe it. So to keyframe this, if I press I, keyboard shortcut I, it uh, brings up this. What type of rotation do you want? Okay. And there's a lot right here. Uh, all we care for now to simplify things is location or moving, rotation, and scaling or resizing, right? So if I were to click location right here, all right, it uh, it basically keyframes X, Y, Z. Regardless, I want to use X only, Y, or Z. All right, so that means I have created at least two static positions that I'm not going to use. All right, the thing with that is when you once you go to your dope sheets. All right, your dope sheet right here. So let's go to animation here. All right, then I'm going to expand my objects. You can see I have static objects right here. You can do cleanup later on, but let's not do this. Okay, let's not press I and then just kind of animate it. I'm going to click undo. Okay, let's kind of make it a little bit uh, precise. So if I wanted to uh, keyframe this, I would be specific. All right, so for this one, let's say we just want it to go uh, forward. All right, so that would be the green or Y axis. So on frame one, I got a position right here. I would right click Y right here and then insert single keyframe, not I, where you insert all keyframes. So by then we're being specific. So this um, in uh, in frame one, on frame one right now, so it's on, it's at zero and we have Y in uh, olive shade right here, meaning there's a keyframe there, okay? So now we go back to our process, uh, step one to four. Step one is to select the object. Number two is position your time. So let's say we want this thing to travel about 30 frames. Okay. We're going to move it to 30 frames. And then we're going to move it along the Y axis because that's what we have keyframe. That was the plan. To move it forward like so. Okay. And then I'm going here. Uh, let's be specific. I'm just going to go minus 12. Okay. And then right click, insert single keyframe. And voila, we got our first crappy animation where it just kind of move forward okay with some principles of animation built in with easing and ease out okay it kind of slows down as it approaches its destination all right so let's say while that's moving forward we want to start animating the rest of the parts right here to kind of not be stiff all right so we wanted to uh everything to start moving or rotating at the beginning so by the time it gets to frame 30 it would have kind of like this 
look right here. All right, so that's our target right there. Okay, so it start up really stiff and then we'll target that one. Okay, so let me just undo all that so that it's straight like this. So next one is this. All right, so we're going to animate the spine uh, one. Okay, so if I got frame one, by the way, uh, using your arrow key, if you go up and down arrow, it jumps through the uh, different keyframes. Okay, uh, let me click the base so that you actually see the keyframes that it jumps to. There we go. And of course, left and right goes one frame forward and back. All right. So just in case you wanted to make sure where those keyframes are without looking at the dope sheet or, you know, graph editor and whatnot, select one that it's animated and you can do up and down arrow and then it just jumps through each key. All right. So we're just going to select this. It's on frame one. There is no uh, position or rotation for it, right? We just want it to start like this, and by the time it gets to 30, we want to bend it back, right? And again, we're in local right here, okay? So we're going to keyframe this, and the only thing that's allowed here is the X makes it easier for us. So frame one, right click, insert single keyframe. I go to frame 30. I do my rotation along the X, and you don't have a choice, of course. We locked everything. We move it back like that. And then right click insert single keyframe so right now we just did that all right let's go to the next one right here so frame one again there's no rotation yet nothing is allowed so i'm just going to go x insert single keyframe i'm going to go frame 30. we're going to go like so insert keyframe okay all right now the uh cone x at zero single keyframe we go to 30 right here we want to make this thing kind of looking forward like so insert keyframe and then let's scrub our animation so from that position all right all right so let's add one uh for this one right here uh it's allowed z so it can do that while it's kind of traveling. All right, so we'll go frame one, Z axis, insert single keyframe. And then let's go with, let's say frame 10, it rotated looking that way. All right, let's just say minus 30. So that, you know, we'll use whole numbers right here. And then the frame 20, it looked the other way. All right, let's go with uh, 30 also so that it matches. All right, and insert keyframe. And then 20 to 30, we want it to look straight, which is zero. Insert single keyframe. So now if you play our animation here, let me just move this to 30 so it keeps. Uh... All right. So really simple forward kinematics animation and we're in local coordinate system and it's basically animating one at a time and uh, what else did we do here we set up our in a way rig where we control what can be animated uh, only and eliminate all the um, possible mistakes that you could by accidentally animating any other input that will not be possible with the way you have modeled it Okay. Again, this is a rigid body, uh, kind of like a robot. You know, nothing is bending. We made sure that it's, uh, you know, it's um, pretty rigid. Okay, to kind of simplify the explanation. All right. So this is forward kinematics animation. All right.